Hi guys, today we're looking at the Matchbox PB4Y2 Privateer. Uh, this particular one is a derivative of the Liberator Bomber. It's uh, an old kit uh, from the, uh, the 70s or 80s. Uh, it's been recently reboxed by Revel uh, and is readily available, but uh, so too is the Matchbox version uh, from various formats like uh, eBay and so on and so forth. As I say, this is a 172 as opposed to the Matchbox vehicles which are in 176. Um, this particular kit it's quite a large kit. It's going to be my son's largest project so far. Are you looking forward to doing it? Yes. Good stuff. Okie doke. Um, the reason we picked out this particular kit is, well, I had purchased it many, many years ago uh, from my, it's in my stash in the attic, as I've often mentioned. But myself and my own father built this, uh, I'd say, a good 35 years ago at this stage. Um, so I remember doing it uh, with him. So I'm going to do it with my son. So we'll see how we get on. Um, the kit itself is a, a three color kit, uh, you can see on the box here side here, so it comes in your uh, usual mass, matchbox uh, multicolor kind of format, although we will be painting it uh, in the uh, recommended Humbrol enamel colors. Uh, we are only short two colors at the moment, uh, so they're going to be wigging their way to us from a supplier in uh, Dublin um, in the next week or so and we'll be able to paint it up once it's finished. So, uh, quick look at the sprues here. Now, as I say, this is an old uh, kit, so unfortunately, uh, a lot of the pieces were missing, or uh, should I say, detached from the sprue, but nothing was actually missing. Uh, there is one little bit of damage to one of the guns. Now, there's not much point in me going through all this because it is quite mixed up, uh, although I do know where everything is, of all loose pieces in this bag and so on and so forth. Um, but take my word for it, they're all there. In actual fact, the glass pieces are in quite good condition. Uh, if you can see there, uh, for all the years bashing around inside in the box, they're not too scratched or that. So they look in pretty, uh, oops, they look in pretty good condition. So we'll be able to operate with those. Going to use a little bit of a Humbrol clear fix on these guys to avoid the uh, course of frosted glass. So we're hoping that that will work out. I've used it a few times before and it seems like a fairly good product. So that's the glass. Uh, we're going to do this in the American version, I believe, is it? Yeah. Yeah, the American one. Okay, well, show me the decals there. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, on the decals there, they're actually in very, very good condition. Uh, so I'm hoping they'll come off the, uh, the backing sheet um, with a, a bit of cooperation. Um, so the, the section in the bottom left corner there, the bottom left quadrant, there the decals we'll be using. The ones at the top are uh, French and of course the ones on the right are uh, British. So we, we won't, won't be using those two, but they'll go in the spares box. So uh, as we see there, uh, it has some um, kind of kill markings there on the side. It has the, uh, the stars and bars and it has some uh, unit markings, whatever it is. And it has a uh, Varga girl who seems to be wearing no clothes, you might have noticed. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, a little bit embarrassed there, the fact that there's a naked alien inside of the airplane, but hey, there you go. Um, so that's the decals. Uh, what else have we got there? The instruction sheet. Have you got the instruction sheet there, buddy? Yes. Okay, right. The instruction sheet, typical matchbox fare. Um, you're looking at a little bit about the aircraft on the first page. Um, so there you go there, kind of a history of it, uh, derived from the B-24 and so on and so forth. Um, plenty of information on that and plenty of information online actually if you're curious about this particular aircraft which is quite an interesting aircraft in fairness to it and uh, quite a, I think it's quite a good looking airplane, uh, much nicer looking than the, uh, the B-24 which I think is, uh, while it has its charms, kind of an ugly looking aircraft in fairness but uh, this one is quite uh, quite nice. And uh, so the usual sort of uh, multilingual information there. Uh, on the inside of this particular sheet you have the various colour uh, color instructions there in typical black and white of the period as you can see there so uh, the one on the top there is the one we're going to be doing up here as you can see so as I say we're just short two colors at the moment but they're uh, going to be winging their way to us pardon the pun um, on the back of the sheet here again some more information as regards the paint uh, painting instructions so you have that and uh, there we have the actual uh, Humbrol recommended um, paints there as you can see my little tick marks uh, for the ones that we already had uh, and we're missing number 77 and 96 which as I said will be uh, heading to us fairly shortly now will you take care of this and uh, give me the other sheet there thank you very much I don't often have an assistant so this is a, a joy so uh, number one there again is the, the pilots uh, seating arrangement um, cockpit uh, basically gun turrets all that kind of thing there very easy um, we thought we were missing this piece, but it actually turned up, luckily enough. 
Um, now, one thing we have to note is that we uh, don't have the pilot figures, but that's the one thing that is missing. They weren't missing on the sprue, it was just that we actually used them for something else. For a, uh, what was that? That was an Academy B24 Carolina Moon one. Yeah, what happened to that? No, it's a B17. It was a B17, sorry, yeah, yeah it was a B17. What happened to that airplane, I wonder? Smashed to pieces. Got smashed to pieces. Oh yeah, right. Um, so we're going to use a different aircrew, which I'll show you in a moment. So uh, the rest of the sheet there again just gives you the various uh, variants there and what pieces to use and what not to use. There's a couple of uh, alternative pieces uh, in the uh, the kit itself. Um, so that's basically the instruction sheet there on that. Uh, what else have we got there? Ah, oh, yeah, this is the uh, the aircrew we're going to use. I couldn't find a decently priced US. Um, Aircrew, uh, but I did pick up today um, a Revels Pilots and Ground Crew for the Royal Air Force World War II. Uh, this particular kit or set of figures um, is around since about 2012, I think it is 2009 actually. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, nice artwork on the front of it there, actually. I must say, we'll do a greater review of this particular um, set uh, another time um, once we have them assembled. Because if you just show me the sprue there, buddy because they're actually um, kind of multipose uh, sort of a scenario there or you have to assemble them basically some assembly requir required as they often say um, but uh, these are RAF uh, figures but I don't think anyone's going to notice now they are by the I think originally sculpted by the German manufacturer Preiser or Preiser um, and as such are a little bit large uh, in scale so we might have to uh, trim them a small bit to fit them in to the, uh, the uh, kit in question here but we'll see how we get on but that's those guys Guys. So I think we're about ready to kick off and maybe put a few bits and pieces of this together. So what we will do is we'll see how we get on. Uh, are you looking forward to doing this? Yes. Good stuff. Um, so I'll handle some of the more intricate pieces and you'll handle some of the easier bits I reckon, yeah? You did fairly yes. well with the uh, armor fast you had Panther and um, what was the other one? The half track, the German half track wasn't it? The, uh, yeah. the 251. Um, so from that perspective uh, we're going to crack on here and we'll get back to you with part two. Um, when we have a little bit more of this particular kit done there may be a part three to this this looks like it's going to be a large enough kit and a large enough project so um, bear with us guys and see how uh, the young lad gets on and uh, what happens um, with this particular kit all right guys thank you very much talk to you soon <laughs> 